and show you this. What we did on the radar is we started, and there's Mississippi, and you see Jackson there, and you see the interstate, and you see that supercell in Mississippi, okay? That's 2 o'clock. Look at the time, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's three hours before it hits uh, Tuscaloosa. Now watch this. 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And look at the tornado signature. You see that appendage there on the end? That's, uh, that's Tuscaloosa. Now, let's go one hour into the future. Hmm. Six o'clock, Birmingham. Do you remember that on our newscast last night? That uh, incredible sight from Tower Cam, uh, of, uh, from Red Mountain, of the tornado coming into the Birmingham area. All right, watch this. Through northeast Alabama, still a tornado. Still into Georgia hmm. as a tornado. Hmm. Into North Carolina. This supercell goes. It started in Mississippi. It ended up in North Carolina. And, of course, we've seen the pictures over and over again. This is a shot from University Mall wow, area. So, oh, look at that. Now, look at that. It, 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 was the storm a tornado on the ground that entire time, or was well, it going the, up and down? Well, you know what? Mostly in Alabama, mostly down. In fact, from, from Kemper County, Mississippi, in east central Mississippi, through Alabama, the tornado was mostly on the ground. Now, we'll know when they uh, do all the surveys uh, if that was the case, but from what we've seen from the aerials, it was mostly on the ground and a violent tornado, uh, generally half a mile to one time, at one time, uh, up to a mile wide tornado mm -hmm. as it came into uh, the Tuscaloosa area. Uh, we, we, we've been talking about these tornado outbreaks now, and uh, it looks like the 298 uh, so far deaths, and still going up. It could eclipse April 3rd, 1974. And what makes that so incredible is to think that if you go back to 65 or even to 74, we've had such tremendous advances in technology and right. warning the systems. Mm -hmm. You've got the word out. People can't escape the warnings, and yet we're still going to have numbers higher than the days when they didn't have anything like that. Perhaps mm -hmm. not as high as it would have been, though. Yeah. You know, right. it could have been uh, 500, who knows, uh, right. with, uh, without this uh, technology we've had. One personal note here. Um, I tell you, yet, you know, when we were broadcasting yesterday, you're in a certain mode. You're dispensing information. You're in, you, the adrenaline is going. The second phase I felt this morning was the shell-shocked, uh, stunned oh, yeah. mode. Mm -hmm. And then this afternoon, uh, emotions started and mm -hmm. tears came. Yeah. So that, that's the, the flow of, and it, it didn't even affect. Well, you're running on adrenaline, I, you know, and, and you're trying to get that information out. But as soon as you get home and, realize and you realize what has impact. happened and the impact, mm -hmm. the death, the destruction, it happens to us all. Yeah. And that was a, a beautiful shot we have on the tower cam coming up right here to show uh -huh. that as despite all of this, tomorrow comes, we have to figure out a way to get through all of this. And there's so many families that are grieving so, so tremendously tonight up in Elmore County, six people dead, uh, family members who have gone through so much, they're hospitalized. We, we heard the very emotional story, the woman who had seven children mm -hmm. and uh, all seeing her mother and dad's mobile home, uh, finding them underneath the mobile home pen down there. They were trapped for hours until some folks could get in. It has been just one emotional story after another. I thought Melissa mm -hmm. McKinney's uh, report from, uh, from ARAD yeah. right. was, uh, was very, very touching And tonight. there's so many stories out there like that yeah. you know people just going through their 